Today I'm going to mix it up and do a quick sew pattern. I started off making the lining first to make sure that the pattern fit my tissue box. It wouldn't waste the good fabric if it didn't. There are two dots on the pattern where I marked their location with pins. With right sides together, sew from the pins to the edge of the fabric. Once sewn, open it up and press the seams with your iron. That's the hole for the tissue to be pulled through. With right sides together, take the two side pieces and line up the raw edges together. The seam allowance in this pattern is a quarter inch. Sew in a straight line from the edge to the fold. Repeat for all similar corners. Press with your iron. Check if it fits. Success! Cut out your fabric. Clip at the two dots on either side of the first piece. Put right sides together. Similarly, mark the location of the dots on the pattern with pins. This one was actually missing a dot. I drew one in using the lining piece for placement. Sew from pin to raw edge of the fabric. Press with your iron. Using a pin, Line up the center of the side piece with the front and back piece. The corner of the side piece should line up with the little clip on the side that you made earlier. The purpose of the clip is so that the fabric pivots easily. Line up the edges and sew. After pressing the corners with your iron, check out to see how it looks. Flip the lining so that both of the right sides are together. Once the raw edges are lined up, baste a stitch around the bottom edge. Using the tissue pole, flip the right sides out. and put the lining on the inside. Once it's tidy, top stitch the lining in place by stitching a line along the bottom edge. Next, the lining and the fabric have to be attached at the opening. A top stitch is possible, but I didn't want to bother with that, so I decided to do an invisible or hidden stitch. Also, because of the location of where this box is purchased at, it's a little larger than the pattern allows for nice coverage. As an addition to the pattern that was not included with the given instructions, I decided to make a dust ruffle to cover the rest. It's just a strip of fabric that's longer than required so that it will ruffle once you make it fit. Because you've previously ironed this, the hidden stitch will be easier to do. Anchor your thread however you want, Next, put the needle in the fold of one of the fabrics and come out a little ahead. Then, go directly across to the other fold of the fabric and repeat the process.
Continue until you're done going around the entire hole. Using the pins again, mark the locations of the dots. Fold the piece in half lengthwise. Use the pins to keep it in place. Sew from pin to edge and down to the fold. Clip your corners and any large extra fabric. Press it with your iron. Time to stuff it. I used a Chinese chopstick to help the stuffing reach the corners. Don't stuff it too much. There needs to be a little flexibility. To close it, I use the invisible stitch again. From the back, mark the center with the pin. Also mark the center of the cushion with the pin. Line them up. Use whatever hand stitch you want to sew the cushion to the bottom if you like. Slip stitch or whatever. I use the invisible stitch again. The pattern calls for a five and a half inch piece of elastic for the middle of the couch. I decided I want two on either end. Sew them onto the bottom carefully if you have added the dust skirt. This will keep the couch cover onto your tissue box. Lastly, some throw cushions. To match the motif of my sewing room, I got some mousse fabric. Sew around the square leaving a gap at the bottom for flipping. After clipping the corners, I ironed the opening like this, so it will make doing the invisible stitch much easier. Flip it. Once you've stuffed it and sewn it closed, it'll look like this. You can have a lot of fun with your throw cushion fabrics. Enjoy a bit of whimsy with your couch tissue box cover. <laughs>